There are hundreds, if not thousands, of note-taking applications on the App Store, starting from Evernote to Obsidian to a database management service disguised as a Notes app, Notion. Some even go as far as getting AI features to take your notes for you. Hey, ChatGPT, can you write a script for a YouTube video? Yeah, what's the video about? Um, it will be about me trying the Apple Notes app for 30 days. On it. Here you go. Being a tech nerd, I've always gravitated towards the new and shiny stuff. But hoping that there is some value in the minimal approach to note-taking and simplifying my note-taking applications, I'm going to try to use a more simplified note-taking application. Notes is actually one of the most used apps on the platform. It's used by literally hundreds of millions of people every day. With hundreds of millions of users, it has to be doing something right. I'm going to try to use Apple Notes for 30 days and see if this is the app for me. So I just had a weird realization that this is Apple's world and we're all just living in it. And the Android functionality is kind of broken on this application. So I guess I'm going to stick with an iPhone for a while. I know I know, I'm, I sound like I'm complaining, but I should have known better. It's Apple. It's the monopoly that exists to save all of our lives that made the best of the products. I should be thankful that they even let me use it on a Windows computer. Like I should be thanking them for it instead of criticizing them for not addressing the world's most popular mobile operating system. It's just fucking stupid. I can't keep a serious face while saying this, but yeah, there's no way to use this uh, stupid application on Android. The lack of Android support, the less than ideal Windows experience should have been expected. I say that because Apple Notes app has been a part of the Apple ecosystem for a very long time. It was even available on the first iPhone in 2007. But at that time, it was just a place to accept text. It wasn't until 2011 we got the ability to change fonts. Then a year later, we got the ability to sync our notes with iCloud. The app also received minor updates between 2013 and 14, such as adding rich text, inserting maps with web links, and syncing with Gmail. And it's not relevant anymore, but yeah, we got the ability to sync with Yahoo accounts. But in 2015, we got a bunch of new features such as adding drawings, lists, pictures. This is the same year we got the first iPad Pro and the Notes app was updated to work with the Apple Pencil. But then in 2016, we got the ability to collaborate and share notes with other Apple Notes users in real time. And then between 2017 and 2021, we got a bunch of functionality such as document scanning, shape recognition. We also got tags, which has to be one of the most advanced functionality of this application. With this slow and steady approach of adding features over the last 15 years, I think Apple has built a fairly capable Notes application. There's this amazing dichotomy of using an Apple application in the Apple ecosystem. On one hand, you're inside the ecosystem, you have some of the best features that exist on the platform, but are only accessible through this one application. On the other side, if you even try to get out of the ecosystem, it is literally one of the worst applications you could use. Apple Notes offers a few magical features. For instance, you can drag an email from the Apple Mail app to your notes. You can even drag mp3 files from the files app and play it in the background while you edit your notes. Also, you can create a new note from the bottom right corner of your iPad and a Mac without ever opening the app first. On the iPhone, you can add a quick note shortcut to your control center to achieve the same functionality on a phone. But gimmicks aside, once you are in a note, you can create tables, create bulleted lists, create a checklist, insert images, and even create handwritten notes. I don't know of any other application that can transition as seamlessly as this one does between handwritten notes and type notes. For type notes, formatting options are kind of limited. You have five presets, and only on the Mac app you are able to copy style from one part of your note to another part of your note. And changing colors of the text is also a Mac exclusive feature. I don't know why Apple chose to create this weird workflow to change font color. Instead of just having a drop down menu, you get a floating color picker. You have to close the color picker as if it's an application by itself. This is the kind of shit that I should have expected from this application because in my experience with Apple, it is more important for Apple to do it the Apple way or the magical way than to do it in a way that is convenient for its users. So I'm using the Apple Notes app to take notes and finalizing the script here. 
and I realized that there's no way to highlight text on this uh, Apple Notes app. So usually when I'm writing scripts for these kind of videos, I highlight the parts that I think should be voiceover instead of this one-on-one -on -one conversation to the camera. So it's just stupid that there's a 15-year-old note-taking application in 2023 that does not let you highlight text. I don't know, maybe it's just not magical enough for Apple. And when you step away from individual notes, the cracks in the foundation become a little more apparent. Like you can create notes with links pointing to third-party email apps, but you cannot link one note to another. And when you take handwritten notes, you cannot zoom in to use a larger writing surface for a cleaner note. So I've come here to do my walk of shame because I just finished taking some meeting minutes and I use Notion for that. It was out of habit. I just jumped to Notion and I hate to say this, this is probably the worst of all of it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. There's so many features. There's so many like structure kind of things that I've built for myself. So I understand that there is a dichotomy of like a structure that I built for myself versus a structure that is built by a monopoly somewhere in Cupertino, California. But that shouldn't be reason that I write off notes as a good application. I'm still gonna continue using it. What just happened was one fuck up and that's exactly how I'm gonna treat it. From now onwards, I'm gonna continue using notes and finish this experiment. I'm coming close to wrapping up week one, and if week one is foreshadowing for the rest of the month, I might give up before the end of the month. I'm gonna look up how other productivity users have been using this app and making it work in their workflow. Okay, towards the end of the second week, I had gotten a little more familiar with this application, and that is when I started noticing the benefits of using a more simple notes app. Having a limited set of features means you can only take notes on your notes app. In addition to simplicity, I also have the benefits of the Apple ecosystem and the shortcut support. You pretty much have a 100% parity between shortcuts actions and the features that this app offers. So at this point, I started using Apple Notes for all my note taking needs, and that includes work stuff. And I know it doesn't sound like a big deal because that's exactly what I set out to do at the beginning of this video, but trust me, it is a big deal because I use a Windows laptop exclusively for my work stuff, to mechanical engineer problems. Although there is no dedicated Apple Notes app for Windows, there is a web app that can be accessed via iCloud.com. One of the reasons I started this challenge was to find something that can reduce friction in my workflow. But not being able to use this app whenever and wherever I want has definitely added friction to my workflow. Maybe if I didn't use Android devices, I could have appreciated this app a little bit more. Even for the biggest Apple fanboys and fangirls that live in the Apple ecosystem, there are some extremely stupid things about this application. While you can take handwritten notes and type notes on the same note, you cannot handwrite your annotations on the typed portion of your notes. The typed part and the handwritten parts will completely be separate. As for images, you can add them to your notes, but you cannot resize them. It will be so much easier for anybody to use a different cross-platform application that has none of these issues. As I come to the end of the month, I started to realize that I need some bells and whistles to have a system that works. And with a simple system like Apple Notes, you might be able to build a workflow keeping in mind the limitations that this system comes with. But as much as people might want to do that and actually like that, I didn't feel liberated at all. In the last 30 days, I've used the Apple Notes app for everything. I took meeting notes, notes for personal calls, added QR codes for smart home products, and even created a shortcut to create my packing lists. Even though it cannot replace Notion for me, I will continue to use it for packing lists and notes for personal calls. But just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. Apple Notes is a good app that comes for free with your very expensive Apple products. You might wanna upgrade to a more advanced application someday, but until that day, you don't have to pay a subscription fee for your notes, all of your data lives in your iCloud that you control, and you get access to some amazing features that no third-party application can ever offer.